Hi, this is Nick with Tim Bell Pod, and here's 10 facts on Ravishing Rick Rude. Rick went to Robbinsdale High School in Minnesota, not only the same high school as Vern Gagne, but some of Rick's classmates included Tom Zink, Dean Peters, aka Battlecat, John Nord, Smash from Demolition, Nikita Koloff, and Kurt Henning. To add to it, across town at a rival high school was the Road Warriors. Rude was well-traveled in the territories, but he owes everything to Memphis. He'd break in with NWA Vancouver after he'd head to Georgia, Mid-Atlantic, Mid-South, WCCW, and then Continental Wrestling. If it wasn't for CWA, Memphis, and Jerry Jarrett, there would most likely be no Rick Rude. While Rick was very muscular and toned, he was living in a world where 300-pounders ruled wrestling, and a lot of the promoters thought he'd never be more than a job guy. Also, the great Rick Rude had a reputation for being a bad wrestler at this time. All that changed in Memphis and Continental Wrestling. Rick got to work with people like Jerry Lawler, Macho Man, and Austin Idol just about every night of the week, and he improved drastically. On top of that, he was given some mic time, and he was able to work out his ravishing Rick character. Rick was managed by Paul Bearer. In 1984, Rick went to Championship Wrestling of Florida, where he was paired up with Percy Pringle. Percy was more of a sleazeball manager at the time, which paired perfectly with Rick, and similar to Paul Bearer and Undertaker, he completed the package for the young Rick Rude. As much as we remember, love, and cherish his WWF stuff, his best work is arguably in WCW. There, Rick lived in the main event scene. He had high-profile feuds with people like Ricky Steamboat, Ric Flair, and Sting, and he seemingly got full control of his mic time and character. If you haven't watched his WCW run, it is beyond worth a watch. Rude was part of a five-star War Games match. Love or hate Dave and his rating system, at Wrestle War 92, Rick would be part of one of the greatest war game matches ever. In a 23 and a half minute epic battle, Sting's squadron of Sting, Barry Windham, Dustin Rhodes, Ricky Steamboat, and Nikita Koloff beat the Dangerous Alliance with Steve Austin, Rick Rude, Arn Anderson, Beautiful Bobby Eaton, and Larry Zabisco. Rick won the big gold belt. At 93 Beach Blast, Rude beat Ric Flair for the NWA World title. Rick held the belt for 178 days before losing it to Hiroshi Hase for 8 days in Japan just to win it right back. He'd eventually trade it back and forth with Sting to end his time as world champion, but that leads to this. Rick had some of the weirdest timing with belts in wrestling history. After winning the big gold belt, WCW left NWA so they couldn't use the NWA world title. So WCW changed it to the WCW International Heavyweight title. Add to that, while in WCCW, Rick held the NWA American Championship. But while champ, WCCW withdrew from the NWA, changed its name to World Class Wrestling Association, making the title the WCWA Heavyweight title. Also, in 86, while in Crockett, Rick won the tag team titles with Manny Fernandez, but while still champion, Rick left for the WWF in April of 87. So to cover their tracks, Crockett replayed an old match between the Rock and Roll Express versus Rick and Manny with the Express winning and just told fans that was the Rock and Roll Express winning the belts back. May 1st, 94, Rick suffered a career-ending injury at the age of 36 while working a match in Japan against Sting. Sting dove over the top rope for a crossbody, hitting Rick. When he fell, he landed on this raised platform that was surrounding the ring, injuring two of his vertebrae. Despite that, Rick finishes the match and wins, even taking a bump on the entrance ramp and doing a top rope knee drop. But after just one more countout loss to Sting, Rick had to retire. Rick was an original member of DX. You have to wonder what he could have done completely unleashed in the edgier Attitude Era, but he wasn't in DX for long. After the Montreal screw job, Rick left WWF in protest. That same night, an angry Rick called up Eric Bischoff and told him everything was real and he would like to come back to Atlanta. Rude was signed to a day-to-day contract, so he was able to walk right out of WWF and right back into WCW. That leads to another crazy timing feat. Rick appeared on Monday Night Raw and Monday Night Nitro on the same night, November 17th, 1997. 
a mustache to Rick Rude, appeared in the opening segment of Nitro live in Cincinnati, Ohio as a new member of the NWO, where he called out Vince and Sean for the screw job. That same night, a bearded Rick opened up the Warzone portion of WWF Raw in Ontario, Canada. Since it's impossible to get from Cincinnati to Ontario in an hour while growing a full beard, it exposed that Rick was either a time traveler sent here to destroy Vince, or WWF had been taping their shows and claiming that they were live. To add to that, ECW would often use old footage from months ago, and months ago, Rick Rude was with ECW. So the same week for Hardcore TV, they aired footage of Rick. Therefore, he became the first person to be on Raw, Nitro, and ECW in a one-week span. For more pro wrestling history, find Ten Bell Pod on your favorite podcast app, or find us on YouTube, Instagram, or TikTok.